uh, this uh, event happened in uh, October the 7th of 1965. Uh, today is uh, the year 2000, so it's 35 years ago. Uh, it was on a midnight shift. Uh, I was the air traffic controller on duty in the tower. Um, at about 1.30 or so in the morning, I noticed this real bright light to the east of my field. And it was kind of a light green, I would describe it. And it had a red light underneath it. And the red light, uh, it wasn't actually a flashing light. It's kind of, I'd say, pulsating type. Uh, probably be a better description of it. Red underneath. And it had a white like light on top uh, that just glowed. And it was very bright and it was quite large. So I observed it for quite a while because there wasn't any aircraft in the air at the time. And uh, so I called the uh, dispatcher down to base operations and the weather uh, man that was on duty that night, the forecaster, and, and that, and got them all to go outside and take a look. And, yeah, what is that, you know? And then and, and, and I had the, uh, uh, one of the detachment guys from the uh, interceptor detachment that was on the base there. Had the captain down there. Uh, got him a break and got him to go out and look at it. Yeah, what is that, you know? And, and so we talked about it for a while. And the RAPCON people, uh, that's the uh, radar people that <coughs> on the base, uh, they didn't have any aircraft in the area at the time. And so we got we called it down uh, to the uh, air defense people at, at Los Angeles Air Defense Sector. And the, um, the director down there decided uh, he got to call around to his site and at one point in time, they had at least four different radar sites that were getting radar returns on these things. Um, they were getting seen at uh, a couple of other towers, like George Tower uh, over at Victorville, and um, I don't remember now, a couple other places there that uh, were, were seeing them. So there were several people on the ground looking at these things and about four radar sites. So this goes back and forth and back and forth for uh, oh, I don't know, two, three hours. <clears throat> and uh, they finally decided to scramble an aircraft on it to go up and take a look at it. And uh, this was coordinated with the other uh, higher headquarters, and I think NORAD was involved and everybody. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, we got into the um, scramble, scramble this aircraft off, and he goes up to take a look at it, and they tried to run him uh, intercept on these targets and uh, at the at the very beginning I had one uh, the big large light at some time later it, it was just sitting there most mostly stationary but it was too close to the horizon to be a star or anything like that it was down below the mountain the, the hills and stuff so it wasn't uh, it wasn't a star so it couldn't couldn't correlate for what it what it possibly could be and then all of a sudden there's like three more objects and they had uh, similar characteristics as far as the lighting is concerned but these three stayed like together uh, they, they stayed like a, I don't know if they were formation or or what it was but anyway these three stayed together and then they moved they stayed there for a little bit and then they moved down to the south of me and set for the set there stationary wall and then a little bit later on there's three more appears, but these three are individual ones. They would fly individually around and go north, south, east, west, and uh, all kinds of things. And um, it, so at this point, I had like seven of them at one time. And so this is when they decided to do the scramble business. It was getting on way up in the, in the early morning hours for that time. And they, uh, got the aircraft up and they tried to run an intercept on him and he was having no luck and so I, they kept asking me in the tower where, uh, where was this object in, in relation to the airplane and the only thing I could do was line him up with my runway where I knew what heading he was on for sure in relation to where I was and then as soon as he'd get to the end of the runway I'd tell him to, to turn to a certain heading and head straight for it. Well about three different times that night he was able to he'd say contact and that contact means he had contact with something in his on his radar in the cockpit of the aircraft 
and what it was, uh, we don't know to this day. One point in time, he was up to 40,000 feet. And when he went near the object, uh, the object just rose real fast, real sudden, and quick and fast. And he just went under it. And there's a place on the tape where um, the director says, how's he looking, Tower? And I said, he's low. And he said, well, he's at 40,000 feet. And I said, I don't care, he's still low. And uh, that thing just went way high and they searched on their radar uh, their height finders and everything for it and I highly suspect it was above their radars uh, at that point so how high would that be? Uh, probably a hundred thousand feet or something like that 80 to a hundred thousand feet was probably their capability back in those days but he did have contact about three different times and he'd lose it but these these objects uh, played around there for the remainder of the my shift and as long about daylight and started getting daylight um, they started getting higher and higher and higher in the, in the in the atmosphere up in the air and by the time it was light enough that you wouldn't see the rest of the stars they were gone too they were just like went away, away like a like a star and uh, they just disappeared into the into the atmosphere 